The BYD Dolphin Sport is something that not many people know about, but it is coming to Australia, so let's figure out what it is, because I'm fairly sure they will sell all of them. They're only going to sell 1,000 here in Australia, so stick around until the end and let me know what you think in the comments at the end. Also, I want to, I want to talk about uh, the new electric cars, the brand new electric cars that companies such as BYD, for some reason, have had to leave in fields in their thousands to waste away. There's a bit of speculation on this, so stay till the end and, and listen to that. Basically, the Dolphin, the standard version of the Dolphin, comes with either a 70 or a 150 kilowatt motor, and either a 45 kilowatt hour or 60 kilowatt hour battery. So both will be great cars, I think, um, and the 150 kilowatt version will feel quite nippy, I suspect. The Dolphin Sport is claimed to have um, an acceleration, acceleration figure of less than 7 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, so it kind of gives you an indication of what to expect, I suppose. Um, offering improved performance too, not just the 0 to 100, but imp improved performance, they say, um, the compared to the Dolphin Premium. So we don't really know whether the increased performance is achieved through a more powerful motor or maybe they enhance the grip, say, with sports tyres, um, which will make a big difference uh, in this sort of car where uh, there's not very much grip in the first two or three seconds of doing a 0 to 100 km per hour test with these front-wheel drive fairly powerful EVs. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, or maybe they're just going to turn up the electronics to give you more power, slow down, um, or they will maybe alter the way that it feels and not really tweak the power, but just the way that it delivers the power. I don't really know. They do this with the Mini E, which we will cover a bit later. Uh, having a sport mode can really make it feel like a, like a completely different car. Um, the Dolphin Sport will likely remain... Uh, front-wheel drive, and based on the pictures that we've gotten from BYD, it's going to have something like 17-inch or so blue and black wheels and a sport-style body kit with black wheel arches uh, with flares and blue accents based on the pictures. Uh, the special edition will also only be available in the coolest paint job, matte grey exterior paint. Really cool. Um, and grey and black interior, just that. Um, it's entering this new era of hot hatchbacks, which I think is great, I think we've been missing that. Uh, it's competing with cars like the Cupra Born and the Abar 500e in terms of performance. Uh, so if just as, as a side note, if anybody has in Australia a 500e Abar, can you please email me? Um, I would love to come and drive it. Arch rival MG plans to introduce a high performance X-Power version of its MG4, that's going to be interesting, while a closer match, I suppose, to the Dolphin Sport would be the MG4 with a 77 kilowatt hour battery, that's the Essence long Essence version long range, which has a, cl a, a claimed 0-100 time of 6.5 seconds. A little bit easier, I suppose, than the MG. Uh, it, it does have a little bit extra weight, which I suppose pushes the tyres into the road, um, but the motor is at the back, which kind of means that it will uh, be better off the line. Uh, the uh, the Dolphin is handicapped in a way because the front wheels will just be wanting to spin for the first two or three seconds. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, I think everyone seems to agree that the MG4 is a really, really nice car to drive. Really nice. So it finally looks as though the hot, hat market, hot hatch market is coming back again. It seems like it dropped off the face of the earth. So it's really nice to see this coming through in this, um, in the EV world. There's just holes. It's like a Swiss cheese. There's holes in it everywhere. We've got no cheap cars for less than 30, 40,000, in, 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 at least in the West anyway. And we've got no, uh, so no cheap cars, no hot hatch cars. It, you really just have to go and spend 50, 60, 70,000 on a Tesla or a fairly expensive car. Um, and, you know, most people don't want to spend that. You know, the most common price for a car in the US is 25,000 US dollars. It's the most common price. So I'll be doing my best to get to drive the sport version of the Dolphin. Might take a while, um, but hopefully we'll have that maybe by the end of the year in showrooms, and that will be for sale 
next year, 2024. Uh, thanks to anybody who has joined on Patreon, YouTube memberships, or anyone who has bought me a coffee. Uh, links to these are in the description below. Thank you very much. This allows me to keep on creating these videos, which involves investing a huge amount of time in thorough research, confirming data, reaching out to companies, etc. Uh, so my goal is to provide you with accurate information that you may not find readily available in the mainstream media. And the easiest way you can help is if you're a bit skint, just press the like button. It's free, it's YouTube, uh, and this shows YouTube people like my videos. Uh, it makes a huge difference because I'm trying to do this as my day job. And when you press the like button or comment or subscribe, you're helping me spread the information out there to help boost the uptake of EVs. Uh, in particular, the cheaper end of the market, which we really need to get going. It also helps my videos when people comment things below. Anything at all, the more interesting, the more, you know, the more enthusiastic, the better, I think. So if you're keen to see what the Dolphin Sport might feel like, just go and drive the Mini E with the 135 kilowatt motor. It's basically uh, slipping its front wheels for the first two or three seconds uh, to do 0 to 100 in under seven seconds. Uh, so it's not always, but often. So I, I think the computer has to do some tech wizardry to make it grip well. And it depends on what setting you have the car in, for example. But I think sometimes it's even a little bit, if it's le a little bit wet or less than perfect conditions or cold, for example, it will be slipping the front wheels. Uh, in fairness, the Mini E does only have a smaller battery of 32.6 kilowatt hours for some reason. So there is less weight pushing on the ground. So um, I think maybe by having wider tyres or better tyres, you could get that up a little bit. But um, they're already fairly, fairly wide, I think, on the Mini E. Genuinely, the Mini E is a hot hatch, I think. It's just, it is just a hot hatch. Um, I love driving it. I've done some videos with the Mini E, so I'll pop them in the description below. It's fantastic to drive. Uh, really, really fantastic. But the range is, by modern standards, not competitive. Uh, so it's still usable, of course. 32.6 kilowatt hour is it's still usable. If you get the chance to drive one, have a good little drive in it, because I think it is really, really great. Now, I really wanted to talk about the fields of cars in China. A lot of the cars are EVs. Uh, there is some speculation that these cars are uh, somewhat perfectly fine cars to drive. They, they appear to be brand new from the footage and that this reveals maybe a dark side to the rise of the Bauhaus, that is the China automotive industry. Uh, some footage was found of vehicles saying things such as BYD inventory flooded, 600 cars waiting to be processed. Um, the fields are 15,000 square meters in size, huge, massive fields, and a YouTuber called Winston Sturzel, I think, shared the footage. Uh, he believes that Chinese EV makers register the vehicles to be able to show numbers which they then use to get subsidies. I couldn't find any evidence online about this. Doesn't seem too plausible really, but it is clearly a waste of these cars regardless. They're all real and they're all just sitting there. There is a Geely, Geely Candy K10 EV, uh, Nita V and BYD E3 models. Nice cars sitting in a field in China. So if you know anything about this, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button so that YouTube knows that people are enjoying it. And subscribe for more daily videos about electric vehicles.